Hi everyone, welcome to this video series on the Grossman model of demand for health. In this video, we're gonna give an introduction to the model and then we're gonna go and solve a discrete time version of the Grossman model. Let's go. So what is the Grossman model? The Grossman model is a model of health stock which was put forward by Michael Grossman in 1972 in order to have a framework for thinking about how consumer choice impacts health outcomes. The way this is done is by forming a hypothesis about what exactly impacts the demand for health, which is done in the context of this model. It is unique in a sense because this model views health as a commodity, which with the appropriate downward sloping demand curves uh, that correspond to it. Through this framework, we can think about things about how income and wealth impacts health outcomes and even how long people live. So the story of this model is as follows. This is a representative agent model where our representative consumer maximizes its utility by choosing to allocate their time and budget to invest in one's health and towards the consumption of other goods and services. Our individual is born in period zero and dies in some period capital T. The way our consumer goes and dies is when our, the health stock at this terminal period T falls below some minimum threshold that we're gonna go and require, which is denoted by H min, where this minimum stock is gonna be greater than or equal to zero. There is no uncertainty in this framework. So um, we have a model where we have a rational choice of when to die. So the lifespans in this model are going to be endogenous here. Consumers produce uh, health capital with time invested in becoming healthier. This is like time invested in working out and exercising and health inputs, M. So we can refer to this as like, you know, medical expenditure. Becoming healthier not only increases the horizons which consumers can consume, but also reduces the time that they are sick, which is accounted for in this model formally. With this framework, we have a model which can form a hypothesis of how economic and demographic characteristics impact individuals' lengths of their lives and how that time is spent in sickness and health, respectively. Formally speaking, the Grossman model is written as maximizing some lifetime utility functions subject to all these constraints. Let's take a second to go and discuss what they are. So the inputs in our utility functions are these health states here, denoted by these lowercase h at a particular time t, and the consumption of all other goods and services, which is denoted by Z at time T, right? I'm, you could write it like this one over here. I just wrote it like this one down here because it just goes and saves space. Um, and we're gonna maximize it subject to all these different things here. So this is effectively, you know, how we transform uh, in our health state right here. We go and we take in health capital, which is our capital H, and we have this transformation parameter uh, phi here at time t. Our next one is just a budget constraint here where our budget, right, we have an initial endowment of our assets that we go and we have here and our discounted flow of wages that we go and we have and that could be allocated to a budget where we have medical expenditure and all other goods, right? So the price of medical expenditure is gonna be denoted by P and our price of all other goods is gonna be denoted by V here. Um, we have our law of motion of health capital here, um, which is you know just gonna be a law of motion of capital, but this time we're just thinking about it in terms of health here. And this next one here, right, is gonna be interesting because we go and we have to actually produce uh, health investment here, right, where we take our medical expenditure or our time or our expenditure on health related goods and services times this g of t of h type of function which is your time that you, the time that you go and have to invest in being healthy then so th you actually go and produce this and the way we relate time in this model is that you have you know a certain amount of time in each period right we could say that it's a, you know 24 hours in a day but we don't really specify here so we just call it omega uh, here and that could be allocated in terms of tw which is time spent working th here right which is time spent invested in your health care t lowercase l which is here which is your time invested in leisure right and t uppercase l here which is your time lost from sickness here now we want to go and minimize uh your lost time here right because that's going to be the real 
thing that's going to be um, taking up most of our time. Um, and what happens there is that that is a function of this L here, where if we go and put in um, health capital there, right, that's going to go and reduce the time that we go and we spend sick. And the last condition that we go and we have here is that death occurs when this health stock that is chosen, right, that we go and we pick, right, falls below a minimum here. So in terms of solving this model, we're going to go and write out a Lagrangian, right? And we're going to rewrite this thing while noting our time constraints. So we're going to go and first look at this thing here, right, this TW, and we're going to go and rearrange our time constraint and we're going to get this big thing here. See, this is a little, you know, messy to go deal with. Next is that we're going to take our derivative with respect to uh, our investment in healthcare at time t minus one. And we get this whole big mess over here, right? And we're going to go and define this new term pi t minus one, right? Which is going to be equal to p times the partial derivative of our medical expenditure with respect to uh, our investment at time t, which is the marginal cost of production of health investment. So um, an initial reaction, at least for me, is that why is this expression so big? So the reason why this is so big is primarily due to our law of motion for health stock because we're gonna be carrying over this i t minus one over in each period as well. So you're just going in subbing it in over and over and over again. So we end up with this massive expression. So noting a few things from the definitions of our derivatives, you have two things. So this one here, that's just from our law of motion of health capital, right? We know that is one minus delta t. And likewise, if we can say the same thing in period n, right? That's where we get this product of all uh, n minus one periods of depreciation. And this last one down here, right? We're going to go and define this as um, the derivative of our health loss function, right? Which is going to be equal to some gamma here. Rearranging our first order conditions while noting this this result, we get this big mess in equation one. What we're gonna do now is that we're gonna take this condition, except where we take the derivative with respect to it, not it minus one, and we're gonna get the following result. If we subtract the second equation from the first, we get this little guy down here, which is going to be what we're gonna go and work with from now on. Further solving the model, we go and we have this condition, and we're gonna move all of our pi terms over to one side, right? This is, you know, effectively what we've done is that we've had our marginal benefit equal to our marginal cost here. That's really what we have here formally. Um, if we expand out our left-hand side and we divide both sides by this cost of investment in period T minus one, we go and we get the following result. Now, what we're gonna do is that we wanna restrict our result to the case where our cost of depreciation, right, in period T minus one terms is gonna be equal to the cost of depreciation in to period T, right? Thus we get a readable optimality condition, which we will be using, right? Where this pi tilde T minus one terms is what's called the percentual change in marginal cost from period T minus one to T. This marginal cost is with respect to investment. Now, this equation is just where marginal benefit is equal to marginal cost, which is our equilibrium concept for this model. So just some comments. This model is pretty cumbersome to solve as you guys have just seen, which is why most prefer to use the continuous time version of this model, which will take a lot less time, which we will discuss in the next video. So I will see you guys in that video. Take care.